Yeah, you're right. This is this is too weird. Hang on. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so that's a bit of an improvement anyway. Um, okay, so down to business. At this point, you're probably wondering where Matt is. The good news is he's still live and well. The bad news is he can't be here for today's video. Matt has a bit going on at the moment. He's booked in for knee surgery next week, I believe it is. Um, he's done his ACL. Anyway, he's going to explain a bit more about what's going on there and the plans for the channel and how he's going to get by over the next weeks, months, uh, with you know recovering from knee surgery. Uh, that'll be in his Unboxing Boxes series on Monday where he'll explain a bit more detail about what's going on and whatnot. But for now, I'm happy to help out with content on the channel and hopefully you guys don't mind the change of pace and having me keep you company. Okay, for some weeks now, we've been hearing rumors of NVIDIA's upcoming budget graphics card series, dubbed the GeForce GTX 1050. Yesterday, NVIDIA finally gave us official details, and we are now able to pass them on to you guys, so let's get into it. Padding out the Pascal lineup is not one, but rather two affordable GPUs. Along with the vanilla GTX 1050, there is also going to be a slightly buffed TI model, using the full GP107 GPU. NVIDIA says they're positioning these new budget parts as perfect solutions to transform basic PCs without discrete graphics cards into something that can play all the latest PC games at respectable settings. As both graphics cards don't require an external power connector, upgrading an old PC is easy and won't require a new power supply, in most cases. NVIDIA is boasting a three times performance improvement with the GTX 1050 when compared to the aging GTX 650, with the GTX 750 Ti falling somewhere in between the two. For this reason, NVIDIA is claiming that the GTX 1050 is all you need to play your favourite games at frame rates above 60 FPS, including GTA 5 and Gears of War 4, albeit at modest resolutions and quality settings. If you've been following the leaks, the specifications won't surprise, as nothing has changed here. Both cards are based on NVIDIA's GP107 GPU and feature 75W TDPs. The GTX 1050 has 640 CUDA cores, while the 1050 Ti bumps this up to 768 CUDA cores. The base model 1050 will operate at up to 1455 MHz, while the Ti model will be slightly slower at 1392 MHz. NVIDIA has already stated through overclocking both GPUs will run happily at up to 1.9 GHz, though they do also expect some users could push even higher. So it will be interesting to see where this lands them in terms of performance. Both are armed with GDDR5 memory operating at 7 gigabits per second. The TI version will come exclusively with a 4 gigabyte buffer, while the standard 1050 will be available in either 2 gigabyte or 4 gigabyte configurations. Both use a piddly little 128 bit wide memory bus, though Nvidia does stress that with their Pascal memory compression technology, this won't be an issue. Both models will become available on October 25th from a wide variety of board partners. Those wondering, though, Nvidia will not be releasing a Founders Edition variant of either card. The TI version is priced at a modest 139 US, while the standard 1050 is just 109 US, placing both in strong competition with AMD's own Radon RX 462GB and 4GB models. Right, so at this stage neither Matt or myself have the cards, and we're hoping to get them in time. That's, that's the plan anyway. Um, regardless, you can expect uh, GDX 1050 versus RX 462GB and GDX 1050 Ti versus RX 464 gig head-to-head -head comparisons on the channel in the near future. Hopefully, if not next week, the week after, but we'll see how we go. Well, that's all from me on this one, guys. How do you think the budget GPU war is going to play out? Be sure to let us know in the comments below. Thanks for checking out the specifications of these new GPUs with us, and hopefully next week we can have some in-depth testing for you, so stay tuned for that. See you, guys. To those of you that already support the channel, thank you so much, it's truly appreciated. And to those of you that would like to support the channel directly, I do have Amazon links and a Patreon link in the video description below. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you guys next time.